Hey everybody, today I wanted to show you something I've been working on in Niagara. And uh, what you're seeing here is I have a particle system that's generating these cubes. And um, as the cubes are moving around, they are going to be avoiding the circle that I have here. So this sphere, as it moves around, the cubes will move away from it. So um, I got this uh, logic from uh, C.G. Howe, and he was showing you how to do this using a, um, a like beetle mesh so it looked like bugs from the Unreal Engine 5 demo. And uh, what I did is I took um, some of the logic that he was using and um, then I added one more thing to it, which is I color the particles based off the distance to the object that they are avoiding. So using this, I'm capable of not only getting them to run away from the, the object, but also their color will go from red to blue, as you can see. So when they're far away, they're blue. But if the object's very close, that means that they turn red and then they'll start moving away. So overall, I'm going to just show you how I did this. It's not, not terribly complicated. And uh, let's get started. The objects I created are a Niagara module script. I called it distance to scale. A material, I'll show you that. We also have a blueprint the Niagara emitter, and then just a Niagara system to encapsulate the emitter. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the emitter itself. I just created a fountain emitter from the template. It's got a spawn rate. I even left it as a, a CPU uh, emitter. Particle initialization. I set the scale of the mesh. Um, I did remove, let me shrink this down. I did get rid of the sprite renderer and I added a mesh renderer. On the renderer, I added a one, one meter cube. I added my override material of my uh, uh, material called Scurry. And those were the only changes I made there. For initialization, I just have um, the lifetime 4 to 21. I changed the uh, scale to make the cubes a little bit smaller. Sphere location, this just controls uh, how big of a sphere it's spawning them in. I added an initial velocity, which is a uh, random vector. The next thing is... Um, this is all default. Gravity force, so minus 980 on the gravity. I added a velocity. So this is just an initial velocity to push the cubes away from the spawn point. I added a drag with a range float of zero to, my, or zero to one. This is the big thing. This is a point attraction force. So using a point attraction force, you can control um, the attraction of the particle to a specific point. Here you control the radius, you then control the minimum and maximum. So if it's a negative number here, you will actually repel the particles rather than attract them. Distance to scale, this is the custom script that I wrote. So I will show you that in just a minute. I then scale the color. I will go through that. And I added collision. The collision, I got rid of the bouncing. So I set the restitution to zero. And then I changed the friction to do a range float between zero and 0.5. Okay, so the first thing is let's look at the distance to scale module. 
that I created. So when you create your module, the first thing you're going to have is just your input map here. You normally change the mix flags to module and spawn and update. And then what I did was um, you mark it exposed to library. Turn that on, otherwise you won't be able to see it later. And what I do here is I basically want to calculate the distance between the current particle and the target that I am trying to avoid. So this target is getting updated every event tick. And um, each time this comes through here, what we're going to say is the distance between these two, I want to scale that distance between zero and one according to a max distance. So for example, if max distance is 1000, then if your distance is 500, the, the scaled version of that, like a LERP, would be 0.5, right? So what I do is I just subtract the two vectors. I get the length from that, which gives you the distance between the two points. I then divide that by the maximum distance. So if this distance was 500 divided by 1,000, you would get 0.5. I clamp that to 0 and 1, just in case the distance is greater than the max distance. So for example, if you're 2,000 away, but the max distance is 1,000, that the division would be two. So I just clamp it to um, zero and one, and then I store it in a new uh, output variable uh, called color scale. And just so you know, when you create a new variable here, um, if you add a new parameter, it always defaults to say local, so like that. And then in order to see this later, if you leave it as local, you won't be able to see it. So you want to change that to output, just like that. Okay. So now I don't know how to delete this. Uh, remove pin. There we go. Okay, so what I did here is I calculated that value between 0 and 1 stored it in color scale. And by doing that, when I go back into my emitter, so after I call distance to scale, you see right here, I'm passing in a max distance of 3,000, and I'm passing in the user parameter called attractor position. In my case, it's going to be the opposite of attraction. But I pass that in in a blueprint. I'll show you that. And then this is the value that's getting passed in. So I compare the target. I then compare the particle position. So if we go back and look. So particle position, input target, and input max distance right so you don't have to pass this in i think because you're you're utilizing the particle position which is uh there by default so after this function or module runs then what i do is i scale the color as you can see here i scale the color of the parameter using a curve and it goes from red then down to a black color and then back up so black there's no color here and then it scales up to blue here but what i'm using is normally you do the normalized age on the curve but i just change it to link it to my output parameter if i do link it put output output color scale and so now this is a value between 0 and 1. So depending on the distance of the particle to the target, this will constantly update and update the, the uh, color of the output. Okay.
So I went through this. The only other thing I did was I added uh, orient to mesh to vector. So this is based off the velocity, the velocity of the object or the particle. So that way the mesh will orient itself to the particle. Let me show you the material. It's really basic. You accept the particle color into the base color. You default the metallic and the roughness to whatever you want. And then as that, as that is running right here on particle update, it's going to constantly be updating that particle color. And uh, that's, that's really about it. I, I think that covers it. Oh, the, the only other thing that I did here is this is the blueprint So you can see. So you can see here is the blueprint in the viewport. But all I did was I added a Niagara system. I set it to this Niagara uh, system that we created. And then in the event graph, what I do is if you, on the event tick, I check to make sure that the target, which I can set as a uh, parameter on the blueprint, I get its actor location. Assuming the target's valid, I get its location and I set the Niagara variable, this vector three called attractor position to the location. So every tick that's occurring. And uh, when you're all done, then this is, this is what you get. I'll go ahead and run this. So you see, you know, they're spawning. Their color is uh, blue because they're, uh, uh, you know, far away. And you can see that circle. So this is pushing them away. It's avoiding them, right? It's that opposite of the attraction. But then if I move really quickly, oops, if I move really quickly, you'll see that they turn red, right? And then they start pushing away. And that's all because of that code that's dynamically finding the distance between each particle and the target. And uh, when you do that, then you get, uh, you get this really, really cool effect. So I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video and have a great day and a safe day. Don't forget that if, uh, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe and uh, take care. Bye.